Good morning, everybody. This is George Pasadakis with Apex Technology Management. Appreciate you joining us today. This is another installment of our monthly productivity webinar series. I know a lot of you have been on uh, previous webinars. Hopefully, you're getting some good value out of them. And we do have these once a month. And today's topic is going to be something that everybody can benefit from in your organization, 15 game-changing Google search tips. We all know uh, everybody uses Google many, many times a day. And uh, I see a lot of people just doing very basic searches. So I got some feedback. I showed a few people some tips and they're like, wow, you should really talk about that. And uh, that would help a lot of people out. So that's what we put together today. Uh, I want to remind everybody we are recording this webinar. So, uh, you know, it's probably best that you're not typing along, trying each tip out as I go through it. Uh, just kind of watch what I'm doing. And once we record this and post it in the next few days, you'll be able to watch each one again and try it out. I don't want you to get lost, you know, a couple of tips back if I'm moving on. So, and we will send out that link once we have that. Uh, and it is all on our YouTube page, which I'll show you in a couple slides how to get to since all of them are recorded there. And if you have any questions, you can use the go to meeting question box in the little control panel and we will address those at the end. Real quick, uh, as you've seen me do on previous uh, presentations, a couple quick slides on Apex. We do have some people that are clients and a number that aren't. Uh, so we're what's called an IT managed services provider. We're located in Redding, California, but we have clients throughout the state. We're actually recruiting in a few different areas in the state as we grow this year. It's really exciting uh, for the company. And we've been in business since 1991, have uh, right at 30 employees, looking for three or four more at the moment, and lots of industry certifications from all the major vendors, Microsoft, Cisco, VMware, Dell, all of those good things. Picture of our headquarters building there in Reading. What IT managed services provide to your organization is a full staff of IT uh, support people. We basically become your IT department. We have uh, the monitoring and patching with the goal of keeping everything up and running uh, proactively, making sure that we're on top of any issues as they're developing very early on rather than letting them get to the point where it becomes an impact to your organization and being able to get your jobs done. We have, uh, you know, like I said, the 24-7 monitoring. We provide security services. And then we also have a virtual chief information officer, VCIO, who is kind of assigned to your account as the IT manager to help you uh, budget, plan, and make sure everything is going smoothly with your technology. We have a fully staffed help desk right here in Reading. The average time to get to somebody live is 17 seconds. We're very proud of that. We also have a full professional services department for doing projects, IT assessments, business process engineering, that type of thing. And then we also are very familiar with uh, the various cloud services that are out there and can work with your team on what makes sense to host in the cloud, what makes sense to have locally. Typically, we, we have a hybrid environment at most of our clients, uh, and that's the uh, the best offering there. Okay, as I mentioned, the, the webinar is going to be recorded, and we have a number of them now already recorded that some people are going to and, uh, and actually sending out the links to their staff uh, and reviewing things at their own pace after hours whenever they might find it most helpful. Uh, everything is indexed. The way to do that, I'm going to show you real quick and bring up uh, Chrome web browser. You should be seeing that now. If I just go to apex.com. Our website comes up if you scroll all the way to the bottom where we have our social media links. The one on the far right is YouTube. If you just simply click that, you're going to get to our customized YouTube page. It has kind of an auto-playing video about Apex, but what I want to really show you, and I'm going to try and zoom in here a little bit, is it's all sectioned off. So if you want to learn more about Apex, we have uh, the videos in here, and you can scroll around. The, we have some client testimonials about clients talking about how Apex has helped them out. But what we're talking about today is our series of productivity webinars. They're all in this section here. So you can see we had one on OneNote, Word, PowerPoint, Skype for Business, Excel. And uh, you know those are things you can go and play back right now and um, get some benefit of. And one of the nice things, if you actually, let's say you want to pull up um, the Skype for Business I'm going to I'm going to pause it 
if you want to send a link out to somebody with a direct URL, just open it up the video, right click, and say copy video URL. So that's now in your buffer, and you could just send an email out uh, to your team if you wanted to let them know about the Excel webinar, for example. So anyway, that's uh, that's the YouTube page. That's where this video will be posted. Again, we will send out a link to that once we have that done. Okay, let's get back to PowerPoint. Um, I do have Chrome running, so we're going to use that today, but these tips will work. Almost all of these tips will work in other browsers, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Edge, and there is a bonus tip or two at the end I have for Chrome since Google writes Chrome, and uh, they've added a few unique things to it, but uh, by and large, all of these will work in any web browser. Okay, so we're going to jump right to it. The first tip that I have is really not counted as one of my 15 tips. A lot of times people worry about the capitalization and spelling in a Google search. You don't really need to do that. Google's spell checker is going to automatically use the correct spelling of a, of a given word, whether or not you spell it correctly. Same thing. If I want to search for the New York Times, I don't have to type New York with the uh, you know with capital on each one i could type new york times i'm going to get the same result if i type if i could type here i'm going to get the same result whether i type a capital or not so you don't have to worry about that if you see me doing upper or lower it, it's not really a concern that you have to worry about when you're searching with google okay on to the 15 tips first tip is going to be what i call quick answers okay there's a lot of things google can, can do for you uh, very quickly you just need to get a question answered like what's the weather going to be today you can simply type weather reading where we're at today and i'm going to get the weather forecast right now it's partly cloudy 67 degrees i can see the next few days so very quick to get weather. That's an answer. You know, you guys have probably done that. There will be tips you haven't done in here, I promise you. <laughs> if you want to define a word, let's say I want to know what what the heck does ransomware mean? I hear it all the time. Apex keeps sending me emails out. You can just type the word define and then the word you want to be defined. So I'm saying define ransomware and Google's going to pull up a dictionary and tell me what that is. And uh, you won't be able to hear it, but if you want to hear the pronunciation, it's going to come through my headset. It just spoke ransomware to me. So, so if you need the definition of something, just type define and the word, and you're going to be good to go. If you're into sports, let's say uh, the San Francisco Giants, you can simply just type your team name or football or whatever it is. If I just type SF Giants, Google's going to say, okay, they want to, George wants to know a little bit about the Giants. So today they've got a game at 215 against Colorado Rockies, and uh, it's going to tell me, you know, upcoming games, top stories about the Giants. And uh, over here on the right, I've got, you know, some facts about them when they're in the World Series, that type of thing. And I have my screen zoomed in so you guys can see it easy. But, you know, normally you're going to get fit more on the screen. But we want to make sure everybody can see everything we're doing today easily. Uh, you can also, you know, I use this a lot. Sometimes I'll get a phone call from an area code I don't recognize. And is this somebody trying to you know, mark it to me or a scam or what it is. So I, I can simply type area code, and I don't know, let's say 605. And Google's going to tell me it's from South Dakota. So you can kind of figure that out when the phone's ringing or you take a call, you want to see where it's coming from. Let's say I'm going to travel. And uh, let's say I want to go to Paris with my wife this weekend. That would be awesome, but not happening. But I can just simply find out the time zone and what time it is. Or let's say, you know, my daughter is traveling to Europe this summer and I want to know, should I call her right now? So I can just say time Paris or wherever she is. And it's going to tell me right now it's 7, 10 p.m. So Google just figures all this stuff out very quickly. So uh, that's tip number one, just quick answers. And there's tons more of those. Um, we could spend the whole day on those. Next tip is going to be the use of tabs. Okay, so let's say I wanted to search for something electric cars. Okay, I just 
type that in and I Google's going to give me all kinds of stuff. Try and sell me a nice Tesla Model S for 75 grand. That'd be nice. Um, stories on electric cars. So it's giving me a lot of information on electric cars, which is what I searched for. But once you've done a search, you get what they call these tabs and you could get more, you know, more and specific information. Let's say I don't want to see everything about electric cars. I just want to see what's in the news about them recently. And, uh, you know, so now I'm looking at specific news articles relating to my search of electric cars. If I wanted to just look at pictures of some cool electric cars, I just click the images button and Google now shows me electric cars. And I could scroll through these things all day long. And it also is making some educated guesses on brands. Let's say I want to see the Toyota electric cars. I can click that. And now I'm just looking at Toyota electric cars I want to go see teslas here's the tesla list so very easy to get to what you want if i want to buy one i can hit the shopping button okay now this is kind of i would think tesla would be in here somewhere but i'm going to mostly see toy electric cars which is what it looks like but uh and then there's the more button if i want to just get videos on electric cars or books on electric cars google's really good at just narrowing down specifics of what you want to find very quickly so that's using the tab so just keep that in mind once you do a search those tabs will appear and you'll be good to go the next tip is what i'm going to call search operators okay so besides just typing words in the search box which is what most people do you can do use search operators to modify the search let's say i wanted to buy a new camera but i only want to spend four hundred dollars I'm going to just type camera, and then I'm going to type the dollar sign and the number, $400. So this is now going to limit the Google search to cameras. Let's get back to all here, not books. Cameras for $400. So you can see in here it found a bunch of results. Six best cameras to buy under $400. You know, it's going to do its best job with the information that's out there. And... Uh, I can modify that and I can say, I don't know, let's spend, let's say cameras between $200 and $500. So I can get rid of the 400 and I could say dollar sign $200. And then if I do dot dot, that's telling Google search it's a range. Now I want to go up to $400 or $500. Let's open it up a bit. And now it's going to find cameras in the 200 to 400 dollar range for me so that's using a range it's the dot dot separated separating the values so that's pretty cool and then a lot of times um, let's say i wanted to search for jaguar and i want to type speed how fast can a jaguar run okay it tells me right here 80 kilometers, that's pretty fast, 50 miles an hour. But I'm probably also gonna find um, some cars in here because Jaguar is a brand of cars, okay? And I'm gonna get top speed of that, but I don't want all the car stuff. I just want the animal, the Jaguar. So what I can do in the search is exclude words from the search, or results from the search. So I type Jaguar speed. If I add a minus sign and a word, it's going to exclude that from the search. So if I now say, get rid of the car. So I'm going to look for the words Jaguar and speed in the search, but not relating to cars. I can do that. And it's now going to, going to limit me to just Jaguar animals and the speed. If I go to images, you're going to see a few cars got through, huh? It's going to do the best it can, but uh, usually it does a little better eliminating uh, the car there. Uh, maybe it has James Bond in there, so Google's acting up a little bit there. But in the search results here, it should be mostly relating to Jaguars. So, um, okay, so that's excluding using the minus sign on the search. And then uh, if you want to do an exact match, there's another way of doing that. If I want, let's say I search for tallest building. Okay, Google's going to do its best job and it's going to show me a bunch of buildings. But down here in the searches, I'm probably going to find, uh, you know, other 
other things that are tall. And if I want to only include those two, I want to make sure both words are in the results only, I can put quotes around them. So now it's going to search for the string tallest building and just give me specific things that say tallest building. So I don't have a lot of the other results in there. So that is um, searching for an exact match. If I wanted to search using an or, tallest, and you should use, this is a case sensitive uh, option here, or building. Okay, now it's gonna search for things that are tallest or building. So we'll have uh, a, a lot of things here, you know, different different words, but they're being combined with that or. Let's go see what we have on the images here. So it's still mostly buildings. Okay, moving on. Let's try this. Let's just say Tesla. Okay, and I'm going to get pictures of Teslas of all different colors here. I want to get this ore to work, okay? So I have blue ones, silver ones, white ones. Let's say black or red. I want to only want to see black or red Teslas. So that there you go, that worked. Now I'm just seeing black or red Teslas. Occasionally something will slip through, but you can see now how um, it's limiting my search to those. Okay, wild cards, okay? Kind of like if you're familiar with searching in Windows or back in the old DOS days, if I had, I wanted to search for something, let's say smallest asterisk, this is the wild card. It's gonna show me a bunch of things that are the smallest in the world because the wild card is filling in any other potential word in that spot. So you can see here, let's just go back to all search results. I have the shortest, smallest people, the smallest countries, smallest girl in the world, just a little tiny gun. I wouldn't wanna fire that thing. So it's telling me everything that's the smallest in the world as opposed to just the smallest uh, of, of any particular thing. And by the way, here's a fun fact. Do you know what the smallest mountain range in the world is? It's called the Sutter Buttes, and it's right here in the North State. Let's see what Google has to say. Yeah, the Sutter Buttes. So these are the small mountains you see if you're heading from Redding down to Sacramento on the east side of the road. And uh, I didn't know that until recently. We have the smallest mountain range in the world right here in California. Pretty cool. Anyway, that's an extra, extra tip there. Okay, tip number four. This can be handy. This is searching in social media. So I could certainly do a general Google search and I'm gonna get some results in people's Facebook pages or Twitter feeds. But if I wanted to just look for something on Twitter, let's say I use a Microsoft Surface tablet here and people have Surface books. If I wanted to just see what they've done with Twitter recently, I can use the at sign for social media and put the word Twitter and then I can type Microsoft Surface, and I should be able to see the Microsoft Surface Twitter feed it finds right there at the top. I can click on it, and here is the Twitter feed talking about the different Microsoft Surface devices. So very easy to get to particular social media. Let's say, you know, we do a lot of Cisco routers and firewalls and that type of thing, switches. If I wanted to search for their Facebook page, somebody told me, hey, Cisco posted some cool news on Facebook. I can do the same thing. I can type at for social media search, Facebook, and I'm going to just type Cisco Systems. And it should find their Facebook page. And I can click on that and I can go see what they announced today on their Facebook feed. Okay, they've got their earnings call yesterday. You may have wanted to buy some stock. That would have been good ahead of the call. Anyway, um, so you can search Facebook. Let's say I wanted to find, you know, there's a new CEO in the last couple of years at Cisco, Chuck Robbins. If I wanted to just search for his LinkedIn because I want to uh, communicate with him, I can simply do the at sign, LinkedIn, and then a space 
and there's probably a bunch of Chuck Robbins on LinkedIn. I'm just going to add the word Cisco. And here is his LinkedIn page. CEO of, of Cisco Systems. Okay, so we can learn about him, see his connections, find out where he's been before Cisco. So, uh, so that's an example of searching social media. Just use the at symbol and then the social media name and then your your search. I've used that a number of times to look people up much more quickly than you know pulling up LinkedIn and doing a manual search that way. Okay, tip number five is image searching. We've seen a little bit of this with. Uh, Tesla and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, if you just do a general search and then click images, you can go that way. Or on the main Google search page, they have this images on the upper right. So if I just click images and let's say I'm doing a proposal for a client and I need some pictures of wireless access points. So I'm just going to type that in. Wireless access point, And I'm going to get tons of pictures of wireless access points from Linksys, Cisco, you know, Zytel. There's just a bunch of them in here. If I specifically wanted to find some pictures from my presentation um, and, uh, you know, on a particular type, you know, I could pick from these terms here pretty easily. Say I just wanted to do, um, you know, Cisco small business line, I can click that. And now it's narrowing down the pictures and images that I'm seeing to just Cisco's small business line of wireless access points. So I can get to some pretty cool uh, images to pull for my presentation. And once you have an image, let's say I like this access point image right here. I can click on it and it's going to take me to that link. If I go back, I can right click on the image and I could actually save it down to my hard drive and use it or I can copy the image and uh, hopefully you guys are seeing the right click menu uh, but there's copy image in there and then I can go paste it into my PowerPoint and um, and view it that way so you can click it if you wanted to share it with somebody you can click the sharing link and how do I want to share it email and it'll or I can grab this link to paste into an email if I click email it's going to create an email message for me with a link automatically in it. So a lot you can do with images if you are uh, you know, running a business or you need to be pre preparing client presentations. Uh, this will be a good way of doing it. Um, I'm going to show you advanced image searching next. Uh, one of the things you want to be careful of and the advanced image search will help you is a lot of images are copyrighted. You know, most of the times nothing's going to happen if I take this image and paste it into a PowerPoint. But uh, there's a way to actually find public domain or images that you're allowed to use legally and not have to worry about it. So I'll show you that again. So you just got to be careful when you're sharing images from Google that you don't want to get in any uh, any trouble. So that's your basic image search, which is which is nice. And that's tip five. Tip six is going to be advanced image search. So if you just go to Google and you type advanced image search, it's going to come up with a page here and you could bookmark this page later if you like. But now this is really powerful. I use this a lot when I'm preparing PowerPoint presentations for clients or vendors. And I, I really want to get granular on my search. So let's say We've got an employee here at Apex that's having a birthday, okay? And I want to find some images to put in a birthday PowerPoint. If I just do a normal image search, I'm going to get all kinds of people's with party hats and birthday candles, all kinds of stuff relating to birthday. But I'm going to say I want to find images with the word birthday in them. You have some other options there. I can search down. And I need, you know, this is a pretty big TV we have here at Apex. I want to make sure the image is larger than 800 by 600 resolution. I don't want the small ones. I don't want thumbnails that have to stretch out. I want something decent size. I can pick color, black and white, depending what I'm what I'm doing. And I want I don't want pictures of people having a birthday party. I want clip art. So I can pick type of image, scroll down, you can see the different things, photos. I want clip art. And um, Furthermore, I want a certain file type. 
And uh, I like PNGs because the background on a PNG file is transparent. So it looks good on any PowerPoint slide. It doesn't have a big white border around it. So you can see the different file types you can search for. And PNG is in here. So I'm going to click PNG. And then this is where I mentioned you can have the usage rights. Okay. So if you just do the default, it's not filtered by license. You could use a copyrighted image inadvertently. You're probably going to be fine on an internal birthday PowerPoint. But if you're going to post something online, you may want to use free to use or share. So you have options here, even commercially. Okay. So if you pick this one, you're going to be safe. And then once I have all my selections, I can click advanced search. And now I have clip art at high resolution that I can simply, that are PNG files that I can use in my birthday presentation. So let's say I wanted to, uh, you know, put this present in there. Okay. If I click this now, you can see these little squares. This means it's a transparent background and it's a PNG file, which is what I searched for. If I, if you can see the right-click menu and I click Save Image As, it's going to give the PNG extension there. So, anyway, that's a really good way to find specific images, certain types of images, specific resolutions, that type of thing. So that's advanced image search, very handy. Okay, that was tip six. The next tip we have, number seven, is a reverse image lookup. Okay, this is pretty cool. Let's say you have a picture of something, or you take a picture on your cell phone, or you have a file of a picture on your hard drive, and you want to have Google use that picture to find similar images. Okay, so, um, you know, let's say I, I, have, uh, I have an addiction to Jeeps, okay? I've got two Jeeps in the family, probably going to have three or four in the next year or two. My daughter wants a Jeep now. So, and I like Jeep Scramblers, which are very rare Jeeps. They used to make them between 1981 and 85. I have one. So if I type Jeep Scrambler and I just do a generic search, let's go click the, uh, the images. Okay. You can see here, you know, this is not a 1981 Jeep. Okay, this is right here on the upper right. You can see some of the classic scramblers like I, I'm into. I have this kind of scrambler. Okay, Jeep is going to come out with a new scrambler based on the new Wrangler that they just came out with in 2018. It's going to look like this. So there's a lot of spy photos. Okay, they're going to reintroduce it with a little truck bed. That's what the scrambler has. Um, but you know, I, I don't want to see all these new ones. I just want to focus on the classic Jeep scramblers like I have. Okay. So when you're on the Google images search page, I can actually click this button here and it says search by image. If I click that, now I can paste it in if I have it in my buffer or I can upload. So I have a picture of a Jeep scrambler. I'm going to hit choose file. It's going to bring up my picture folder and here is the kind I'm looking for. I just pick that, it uploads it to Google, and now Google is going to use that image and interpret it and tell me about that. And it tells me, okay, best guess, it's an 81 scrambler, it's talking about classic scramblers, so I'm now limited to just the classic ones, not the new spy shots, okay? And you'll see if I click down here, visually similar images, so it actually analyzed the picture I uploaded and found things with similar characteristics. I'm going to let you try it on faces, okay? But it can do some pretty amazing things and find people. Um, so you can see here, I'm really, I don't have any of those new spy shots in here. I'm just looking at exclusively the classic ones. So that's called reverse image lookup. Very handy um, for certain things. Okay, now the next tip is kind of related uh, and it's filtering your search results. So once you've done a search, you know, Google will give you thousands or millions of, re of results, but now I need to refine that down. So let's go back to the Google homepage. Let's say I'm back in the work mode. No more Jeeps. Okay, get back to work here. I need to search for Dell file servers. Okay, so I type Dell file server and I get all kinds of links and, and information on them. Um, you can see from 2016, 2013, you know, that's kind of old for a file server, five years old. We recommend replacing them about that age. I need to limit my search to more recent or filter my search to more recent results. 
okay? We mentioned the tabs before, which are great, but if you click under the more button, okay, uh, right now I'm getting results from all time periods that Google has indexed. And actually, if I click the tools button over here on the right, now I get this little box that popped down here that says all results or any time. So I can click here and it's going to show me verbatim or just anything that has the word Dell and file server. But mostly what I use is this drop down. So right now it's showing me Dell file servers from all time. If I want to just see in the last week all the articles on Dell servers that have been posted very recently, I can click that button and now my... You can see my results are just three days ago, six days ago, four days ago, three days. I don't have 2015, 2013, five years ago. So I have much more recent results, which is a, a lot of times when trying to get the most current information, especially in technology, people I've seen scroll through pages and pages looking for the new thing. Just click the tools button and then pick the search that you want. And you could even do a custom date range if something came out more recent than that or within a, a certain week or something that you're looking for. Um, so uh, so a lot of times, you know, that'll be great. And uh, you can narrow down your search. Tip number nine is, and there's 15 tips, if you recall, so we're getting through them pretty good. Tip number nine is search by title or in a specific website only. Right. Most people, when they do a generic Google search, they're just getting everything Google has from all over everywhere it's indexed. If I want to just search for a word in the title of an article, I can do that. Let's say I want to I'm doing a, a report on ransomware. If I just search for the word ransomware. OK, I get all kinds of stuff, 13 million, 700 thousand results. And it's finding the word ransomware in the title, in the body of the text of the article. You can see where it, it, it emboldens the word ransomware, the search term uh, in the results. So it shows you it's, in, it's embedded in there somewhere. Um, so I get tons of them. If I wanted to just find websites that have a page that has the word ransomware in the title, I can use a search qualifier and I can type uh, in front of the word, instead of just the word ransomware, I'm going to type a Google reserved word in title and then a colon and no space. So you can see I have the word, I want to search in the title of articles only for the word ransomware. So if I hit this, I went from 13 million results to 81,500. And these are just articles with the word ransomware in the title. Might also be in the body, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, this one, it didn't find any in there. So if I'm looking for an article to do some research, I may want to just pull up the in-title search, which is really nice. But let's say I got to go further on my research. I want to know how to prevent ransomware. Okay, so I can actually use a different reserved word. I can say all in-title which is another Google modifier and a colon. And then all the words I put after this, so let's say prevent ransomware. So now it's going to search for, search, search the web for all articles it can find that have the words prevent and ransomware in the title. So now I should get some articles that talk about preventing ransomware. Ah, much better for me. I don't have to wade through uh, a lot of other things. So how do I prevent ransomware? Okay, so now you can see very powerful. I'm able to drill down into what I'm specifically looking for. So that's the word in title and all in title as Google search modifiers. And again, you don't want any space after the colon and the first search word. Um, and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Now, let's say, you know, I got a lot, I got 81, 000, uh, 1960 results on how to prevent ransomware. Let's say, let's go back to the um, in title colon ransomware. Okay, I have the 81,500 results. You know, you've hired Apex to manage your IT. What, what does Apex have to say about ransomware? Okay, so I want to restrict my search now. Instead of everything with ransomware, I want to search what does Apex have on it? So there is a new Google modifier. I can type the word site, colon, or let's, let's say I'm looking for ransomware. So I type the search words and then I want to restrict it to a specific site. So now I do site, colon, 
apex.com. So now this is going, remember, no space after the colon. This is going to show me all the things on the Apex website that have the word ransomware in it, only Apex. If I hit enter on this, I have 52 results, and you can see they're all on the Apex website. So if you're looking for something from Cisco and you just want to look on their website, not everything under the sun, you can do that. You can limit your search to a specific website by using the site colon. Very handy. I've done that a lot, and um, you'll 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 welcome that one when you're doing some searches and you get so many results. Okay, so that was searching for uh, articles with a word in the title or on a specific site. Tip number 10 is Google has the capability of doing math in your search, okay? So you can do very rudimentary things, like I could do 450 times five. I don't have to go pull up an on online calculator and it's gonna tell me that's 2250. And then it actually will show me a calculator on screen. I can do other things. I can clear it out. I can go five times 625. So I have a calculator very quickly. You know, Windows has it, but Google has it built in as well. I can even do things like 30 squared, if I can type that right. And it's going to tell me that's 900. So you can see that. I can do square root of 900. Google is going to tell me that it's 30. So very simple stuff it can do. It can do 2 and uh, power. So if I want to do 2 to the 10th power, I hit 2. And then on the, sh the 6 key, shift 6, I get the caret. And then I do 10. So this is 2 to the 10th power, which is 1024. Um, and then, of course, the calculator is there for you to do other things. You can you know, do scientific functions on it as well. So that's tip number 10. You can do a lot. You can do arcs, sines, signs, all the different things, degrees. It's very powerful. So that's tip 10. You can do math directly into the search box. Tip number 11 is conversions. Use this a lot as well. Let's say I wanted to know I got a recipe or I need to uh, use 32 cups of water for something and I need to know how many gallons that is. I can say 32 cups two gallons. And Google's going to tell me, okay, 32 cups is equal to two U.S. gallons. I can say 15 miles to kilometers. Oops. And it's going to tell me 15 miles is 24.14 kilometers. So I can tell my daughter who's going to be in Europe this summer how far something is. Hopefully she can do that herself. Anyway, let's say uh, 125 pounds to kilograms. 125 pounds is 56 kilos. So those conversions are awesome. The nice thing is once you do any kind of conversion, you get a really powerful little box here. I can do what type of conversion. I can do areas digital storage, you know, gigabytes to terabytes, energy calculations, fuel economy, length, you know, uh, once you pick one, you get the specific types of conversions you can do. So I pick length, so I get, of course, foots, meters, yards. So let's say I want to convert 500 feet to meters. Very easy to do in here. So 500 feet is 152 meters. So you have lots of different kind of conversions you can do temperatures, you know, 85 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. So 85 degrees Fahrenheit is 29.4 degrees Celsius. So conversions are very handy. That's tip number 11. Tip number 12. And again, you guys have smartphones. You can do this on Google on your smartphone. So wherever you're at, you can do quick conversions. Tip number 12 is translations. Okay. Google has language translators built in. So let's say I want to know uh, I'm traveling in Spain and I want to ask somebody how far the airport is. So I'm just going to put in here, how far is the airport in Spanish? And it's going to tell me, okay, in Spanish. And if I click this little button here in my headset, I'm going to hear it. All right. It just spoke it to me. So you could have somebody on the side of the road and play this for them and they're going to tell you where it is and then you can translate things back. But um, very handy for translating. If I want, you know, I've, if I was traveling to Paris and I'm in a restaurant, 
dinner in Paris can take two or three hours. They, they take their time. They like to enjoy their meal. I want to get the check and get out of there. So how do I say the check, please, in French? And it's going to say, l'édition, s'il vous plaît. So I could say that and get my check and be on my way. So if I'm traveling through Germany and I need to get a cab, I can simply ask Google, how do I say I need a cab in German? And it's going to tell me. I'm not even going to try that one. But uh, anyway, Google Translation is really powerful. Comes in handy if you're if you're traveling internationally or you have somebody staying with you and you want to find out how to say something. Okay, tip number 13. You can track packages right in Google itself. You don't have to go to the UPS or FedEx site. So I'm going to copy in a tracking number. We have some uh, Cisco equipment coming in Apex. I'm just going to put a tracking number in the Google search field. Google's smart enough to tell me this is a FedEx tracking number, and I want to click that, and boom, I'm right on the FedEx site, and I can see this thing shipped from Southern California in Mira Loma. It's in transit. And it's going to be delivered tomorrow by end of day. So um, Google can just directly track packages um, without having to go to multiple websites. Okay, tip 14, I'm getting down to it here, is you can track airline flights right on Google. So you don't have to go to United Airlines page, log in, go punch that in. I could just type United. I'm making this up. Hopefully this is a real flight, 571. So if I was on my way to the airport, I need to check the status of my flight or somebody's flying to see me. It's going to tell me, okay, not near my area, but that's a flight from Newark to Buffalo. And today it leaves at 9.57 p.m. It's on time. If it was already en route, it's going to tell me where it is. And if it's uh, scheduled landing time has changed, the gate. So you can just, you know, type any of those. AA125, American Airlines Flight 125. Wow, Dallas to Hong Kong. Okay, so very quick. You know, you can even... On your phone, say, okay, Google, and have it find that for you, and it'll speak it back to you. So that's tip number 14, tracking airline flights. And tip number 15, this is a really good one for uh, for business users. How many times are you creating a document and you want to find other similar documents that you can pick up some good ideas from. Let's say I wanted to do an expense report and I want to, you know, there's got to be a lot of pre-made expense report Excel files out on the web. So I can just type expense report and I'm going to get tons of things. Okay. If I want to search for a specific file type, that's what tip 15 is. I can type expense report and then I can use another Google qualifier like we've seen before. I can say file type colon xls which is you know xls and xls x those are the file extensions on a windows excel spreadsheet and now you're going to see i have only results i have 33,600 results that are excel files for business expense reports okay now i will caution you as your it provider potentially you got to be careful when you're downloading files from the internet, okay? You want to make sure you have current versions of Excel. Um, older versions have security holes. So you want to be staying current and make sure they're fully patched and that you do a scan on the file. But let's say I want to find, I want to download this uh, expense report from Columbia University. I can click this. It's going to download. If you guys can see that down here in the bottom left. I can open up the expense report, and it's coming up on my other monitor. As soon as it comes up, I'll drag it over there, and I think you'll be able to see this now. So now I have an expense report in Excel. I could customize this for my company. I could take sections out of it. I can see what they did, look at formulas. So very easy to find uh, files. Let's say I wanted to create a job application form, okay? I can type um, job application, and then the same thing, file type, colon, doc for a Word document. And I've got over 9 million job application forms to choose from that are all dot doc type files that I can download and take a look at. Again, be very careful uh, about doing this. 
Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, ransomware variants that use macros inside of Office documents. And um, let's say, uh, I want to look at this one. I will show you the newer Office applications have a good protection step. I'm going to open this up. In uh, uh, that one didn't download. I got a network error. Let's go to Joe Jack's Cafe. See if we can get that. Uh, one of the things we have at Apex <laughs> is all files that are coming in are scanned on our firewall. Uh, before we were allowed to execute them. But it, well, this is what I wanted to show you. In Word and Excel, the new Office versions, automatically uh, Microsoft puts you in what they call protected view. And this basically blocks uh, macro scripts from running, which have been known to have ransomware payloads in them. So, um, you know, this is one of the levels of protection. If I want to edit it, I click the enable editing button. Those macros would be enabled. So you want to make sure it's been scanned. So anyway, there's a Word job application. So very easy using the file type um, search modifier uh, to to find that. And uh, those are the 15 tips. I do have a bonus if you do use Chrome, okay? You will notice this little voice search button here. So if I type, you know, click this button, my computer, if I have a microphone, which it does, is gonna be listening to me kind of like your smartphone and I can type into the search box. So I can say expense reports from Columbia University. And I didn't type that, it just put all of that in there. So. So now I have expense reports off of that search. So that's specific to Google Chrome. I think they've added it to a couple of other browsers, but not all of them have that. They may have their own mechanism, uh, but that works out quite nice. And that's a kind of a bonus tip for Chrome users relating to Google searches. So let me flip back over here to the PowerPoint. Those were the 15 tips. Again, this is recorded and we will post it. I want to see now if we have had any questions come in. It doesn't look like I have any questions. So again, if you guys do have questions later, take a look at the recorded link once we put it out there. You always free, feel free to email us or give our help desk a call and uh, we'll be happy to help you. Uh, next month on our productivity series i'm going to have a, a special webinar and we're going to talk about windows 10 tips we're going to show some really cool tips that a lot of people using windows 10 don't know about they keep adding more and more tips with these new releases they've come out with uh, but also very importantly what you need to be thinking and why you need to be thinking about windows 10 if you are like a lot of organizations that have many many windows 7 computers uh, those are going out of, they're in extended support already, and they go out of support from Microsoft January 1, 2020. So you have the rest of this year and next year to replace all of your Windows 7 devices before they become security holes on your network, like Windows XP did a few years back. You know, we're working with our clients now to start budgeting for those projects. These could be pretty significant projects. <clears throat> and you may not want to take the expense all at once to convert 150 Windows 7 machines to Windows 10. Generally, we recommend if the machine is more than uh, a year or two years old that you buy a new machine with Windows 10 on it rather than upgrading Windows 7 to Windows 10. It's going to be a much better performing machine, more reliable and uh, there are some hardware conflicts on older machines. A lot of machines were purchased uh, that have a Windows 10 license, but it was downgraded to be a Windows 7 machine from the vendor for compatibility with certain apps, electronic health records, some engineering applications. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, and uh, you may wanna be budgeting, like a lot of our clients, over time to replace batches of Windows 7 to Windows 10 between now and the next year and a half. Uh, you know, Apex and all other IT companies are going to be extremely busy um, towards middle to end of 2019 doing all of these projects. You want to make sure you get in line as early as you can. At the same time, not a subject of the next webinar, but at the same time, Server 2008 goes end of life and you need to be upgraded to 
server 2012 or higher 2016 2019 is coming out very soon uh, so that is a more involved project and uh, we're going to be very busy with those as well so you want to be planning uh, and then over the next year and a half to get on current versions of these operating systems or you will have um, unpatched security holes and uh, exposing you to unnecessary risk anyway uh, that will be on june 21st the windows 10 uh, webinar at 10 a.m pacific that's the same time we do all of these the third thursday of every month and if uh, that's all we have, we will go ahead and end the webinar and post the recording and send out a link. Thanks so much for joining us today. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.